Hey there guys, I think PC guy here, and uh, this time trying uh, a new camera angle. Hopefully uh, you guys uh, like it a bit better than the other one. Just let me know which one you prefer. And uh, this video will be going about uh, stress testing your CPU slash benchmarking it with different programs and uh, software. Now, why would you want to do this? Uh, this is aimed mostly at people who have overclocked their CPU, in this case the CPU. There are also stress tests for GPU, but this one we will focus mostly on the CPU itself. Uh, because that's what I also overclocked uh, when I've uh, upgraded my uh, rig the last time and uh, that's what I have used and I thought since I made also a video about overclocking your CPU that it would be useful for you guys. Now how do you go about doing this? There are several programs that um, you should use to uh, stress test. Uh, there's a number of them. I'll be focusing on three, which are the three that I have used in my own case. Uh, those are ADA64, Prime95 and Cinebench. There are three different programs that uh, use three different approaches. Some are more demanding, some are less, but they all do the same, which is push your CPU to its maximum uh, full load, um, full voltage that you have set obviously and uh, they also push your cooling to the max because cooling is an important thing to keep in mind when overclocking and this will also let you see if your cooling can actually handle all the heat from your overclocking uh, when it is going at full load for an extended period of time. Now how do you go about this? You have to download the programs, you have to have some sort of monitoring software. I prefer HW Monitor, although there are others out there. Ada64 has its own monitoring software, and uh, there's uh, HW Info64, uh, you name it, there's plenty of them out there. You just have to pick one of them, uh, get your programs, and basically get it running. They're pretty simple to run. Now. Um, I will let you see when you are actually running the programs, what you should looking, be looking for, and then I'll show you where to get the programs, and uh, then I'll run short tests with them to let you guys see. For the monitoring, I use, like I said, HW monitoring. Um, you are looking at vCore under your motherboard, which is the voltage that your core is getting. You want to make sure that it's getting what you set it to get. Also to keep an eye on how much voltage is missing. For example, I have mine setting at 1.28 and I'm actually only getting 1.61, 1.27 uh, in some cases. This is because of something called vDroop, which means that there is voltage getting lost before actually making to your CPU. Now, you have settings to account for that in the BIOS, like, like I have mentioned in my other video, but I am uh, fine with the stability of my overclock, so I'm not going to tinker with it anymore. Uh, obviously, you want to look at temperatures. These are idle temperatures. They're a bit higher than they should be in my case, because I had just run a few stress tests right before recording this video. Uh, and in water cooling loops, it is worth mentioning that it takes some time for the loop to saturate with heat. And it also takes some time for the loop to bleed out the heat afterwards. So that is why when running stress tests, you should have it for at least, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes to make sure that the loop is completely saturated with heat. And if you want to test idle temperatures, which is not very useful, you should wait a bit after using your PC so that it can be completely cold and you can get a more realistic result. Now, CPU utilization, it will be at max anyway, and frequency it should be at the max that you set it to, uh, while running the test at least. Now, as for the programs. Uh, Prime95, you can get it at www.mercine.org slash download. Uh, you can just get the version for your operating system. This is, has been, in my case, I find this to be the most demanding test to run that pushes your cooling to its hardest. So uh, I would not skip out on trying this one if you want to make tests for stability and cooling. And the 64 you can get it at ada64.com. I would get the extreme version, but keep in mind it is a paid program, uh, although you can get a trial version, which uh, is what I did. For Cinebench, you can get it at maxon.net. Um, you download the Windows version and uh, you're good to go. Uh, you can just uh, download it and uh, both um, Cine uh, Cinebench and Prime95, they don't have installers, they're literally just folders that you download and you run the executables, and that is about it. Now, how to run these programs and uh, how to interpret what you see. Uh, I advise between each test to just clear the min-max uh, history on your um, 
monitor. So, oh yeah, something to keep also in mind is your fans. Uh, you have to have uh, either your fans on auto, so they can you know go as hard as they need to to test the cooling capability, or to have your own custom fan curve set. Either works fine. Uh, I have my own curve set, although it's not set perfectly. You will see that this fan here will be going a bit slower, but I mean literally a bit slower, like 50 to 100 less RPM. But anyway, I, I am uh, going off topic once again, and I wanted to keep this video a bit shorter, because my videos have been getting longer and longer, and I don't think people necessarily love it. Uh, so I will just jump right in and show you the tests. I will start with Cinebench. Uh, as you can see, it has a very simple interface, it does not have a lot of options that you need to set. You literally select the tests you want to run and you run them. I will go with the shortest, shortest test for time constraints to not keep you guys here for I don't know how long. But you literally just select the tests you want to run and you run them and it will test you for... it will run the test basically. You can keep an eye here, for example, full load as uh, expected. Temperature, temperature is going up to the 60s. Then again, it is full load and you only really need to start worrying when it starts hitting the high 80s into the 90s degree area. That's when you really should dial down your overclock a little bit. It's not the maximum. You can, in theory, go up to the hundreds, but we are trying to keep our CPUs um, a bit safe in the long term and not having them degrade because of the heat uh, too soon and keep their life a bit going. Now it will give you a score. The score compares it to your previous uh, tests and also to other CPUs. Uh, it's useful for reviewing purposes, but for your own stability tests, there's not a whole lot uh, of uh, use to it other than comparing it to other people. Now this test was very short. There are longer tests here. Uh, it tests it for a set until the task is complete, and then it stops the test. Uh, as you can see, 60s temperature. Uh, it's a useful test, but it does not let you run it for an extreme amount of time to test for stability in the long run, which is why we use the other programs I mentioned. Now, I would not like to save my benchmark score, no, because it was not great, because I had recording programs and all that stuff in the background running, so it influences the score. But the score is not what we're after here anyway, it's the temperatures and stability. Now, uh, I will go with uh, ADA64. I will leave Prime95 for last, because that's the one that warms up my PC the most. Uh, ADA64 actually has an installer, as you saw, it installs a program on your PC. Uh, you can test it here. And you can go in the preference and test with or without AVX uh, instruction set. What does this mean? With AVX instruction set, it will stress test your PC a lot harder. So higher temperatures, higher power draw, and uh, more cooling requirements. Because uh, AVX instruction set takes a toll on your PC that not having it doesn't. Uh, there. And... Uh, it is only used on a few programs, like Adobe Premiere and some other stuff. But So it, you might not run into AVX um, cases every day on your daily use. But it's I find it useful to test for the worst case scenario and for the more intensive scenario as opposed to without. So um, I will be starting this test. As you can see, you can stress select here what you want to test. I will just stress, start testing these two right now. And... Uh, as you can see, temperatures again spiking up to the 60 degree range. Um, the fans are also going a bit faster because of that. I only have them set to go at 80% at the full load when it's at really high temperatures because of noise levels. But uh, in any case, you can see here, my overclock is normally 5.1, all core. It's going at 5.0 because I have an offset that makes it uh, drop the clock when there is AVX involved in an attempt to keep the temperatures a bit more under control. Uh, it's a personal preference. I could leave it on and the temperatures would not be crazy. It would probably spike up to the 60 something, high 60s to 70s. So it would be bearable. But as you will see on the next test, uh, which I will show you now, I will stop this one and I will go into Prime95. As you will see here, the temperatures uh, will literally ramp up in some sort of uh, 
workloads. And I have forgotten to do this, but uh, you should clear your memory between tests because you don't want the max values from the previous test to be showing on the next test. Um, and you will not be sure what, what the max was if you leave it running and go, you know, do something else. So I will clear it. We remember that the temperatures were around the 65 mark. Uh, and anyway, now you will see on Prime95, you can just go to Options, Torture Test, and it has different tests. These two are less demanding. They test different things. This one tests more RAM. This one tests uh, power consumption and a bit of RAM. This one is mostly for your CPU. And it does include AVX, so it will have very high temperatures. And this one is a lot more intensive than the ones I have shown you before, which, which you will see on the temperatures when I start the test. As you can see, it spikes up immediately to 80 degrees. And uh, I have run this test before for an extended amount of time. And I know that it will saturate the loop very quickly in a matter of a couple of minutes. And it will stabilize at around 85, 86 degrees uh, on the package and a bit less on the course. Uh, and yeah, this is the ultimate test for your cooling system. And uh, I would recommend, not just with this test, but also with Ada, um, to, when you are first setting your overclock, run the test for like 20, 10 to 20 minutes to make sure that it is stable and that your cooling can mostly handle it. When you are done with tinkering with your overclock and you're happy with it, you're going to leave it like that. Run the tests for about, I don't know, two, three hours just to make sure that it's stable in the long run because a, a short duration test is a lot different than a long duration test. If you want to make sure that it's good to leave it like that for 24 seven and just roll with it, you want to test for an extended amount of time. And uh, obviously when I say on both tests separately, not both at the same time, um, and yeah, you want to leave it running like that, make sure your cooler can handle it, make sure your PC can handle it and that the settings are all good. And if there are no errors, no crashes, no blue screens, no reboots, then you're good to go. Uh, if your temperature is here, as you can see, if they would be going into the 90s or into the if any higher 80s, I would dial back the overclock a little bit and uh, also potentially lower the voltage. Uh, but... As you can see, I am fine with these temperatures because these are temperatures under full artificial load that you will never encounter in real life situations. You will not run into this kind of temperatures when playing games or editing video. This is a completely artificial load that pushes it to the absolute max. So if these temperatures are safe, and they are because CPUs can go all the way up to the hundreds before they actually are in any danger, um, I will just, I'm happy with it, I'll leave it like that. Now, if you are stress testing it, like I said, you can leave it running for longer. In my case, I have already gone through that. This is just an example video for you guys, so I'm gonna stop it. And you're gonna see the temperatures immediately drop down. It will take a, lot, a few minutes for the loop to completely remove all the heat, but yeah, it's immediate. You can see how intensive this is. So uh, yeah, that was about it for um, our stress test uh, guide showcase example whatever you want to say it um, that is basically it some benchmark programs give you a score to compare these most of them don't uh, but Cinebench does the other two don't but in any case uh, if you're testing for stability and temperatures like I am you don't really necessarily need uh, those scores uh, you just need to know. And the important thing is that you leave it running for a few hours, that it is stable, and that it is running at uh, decent temperatures. So no crashes, no reboots, no blue screens, no weird things happening. And uh, if it does, then uh, your overclock is probably fine. And uh, you don't have to worry about it, you can just leave it running. If it's too high, dial back the overclock by uh, 100 megahertz or something and or lower the voltage to reduce temperature. Uh, on the other hand, if you want to keep the same vo uh, overclock and your temperatures are not too high, if you have stability problems, you want to increase the voltage a little bit, and that will give it some stability. So it's up to you which approach you want to take. You either go higher voltage for more stability, but also more heat, or you go lower voltage slash lower clock, 
for better temperatures and also better stability hopefully and then you test it again until it is fine now i hope it has been clear and i am not sure how long the video has been going i hope it has been shorter than my previous videos because uh, i think that the long videos like i'm doing with a half an hour might turn a few people off so i will not drag this on too much and uh, any questions i'll be happy to try to help you guys uh, this has been Attic PC Guy. Good luck with your overclocking and may your temperatures be low and your clocks be high and I'll see you next time.